there's a lot of information out there on the web, almost too much information. And I'm sure there is a question that you may have regarding Mac computers. So what I did recently is I put out a poll of a survey to answer some questions to my subscribers to ask me anything relating to Mac computers, whether it be general information, accessories. And in this video today, I'm going to attempt to answer each of those questions. Some of the answers may be my opinion, some are actual fact. Hello, my name is Brett. Today we're answering questions about MacBook computers. So I ask that you hit that like button and subscribe to this channel. Today, you're gonna get some resourceful information on Mac computers. If you have any other general questions about Mac computers, please leave them on the discussion page here on YouTube. I started using Macs about mm, 15 years ago. It was, seems like a long time ago but I was looking for a solid computer. I didn't need it for Word. I didn't need it for Excel or Microsoft Office. Windows got all of that. When I first started out, I started out with a lot of different sound files, a lot of media that I had to organize and I was using for production. I had to live with the inexperience of purchasing something that later on down the line, I realized wasn't the right product for me. Not necessarily because of Apple's products itself, but it was because of my inexperience. So now I wanna share all or some of this information with you today. If there's any information that you've received today that's been a help to you, I ask that you, in support of this channel, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel so that you'll receive updated videos as I post them. First question. First question, I feel like I'm really old school with this um, sheet of paper, but first question is from Lamont Henderson. Lamont says, why do iMacs have different ports than other computers? It's always a nightmare for me to get the right cords, especially if I have to spend extra money on converters. The current ports of the Mac are the USB-A and the USB-C. I'm not really sure how I wanna tackle this question because Apple's ports are unique to Apple. That's the reason why they have their ports the way they are. Apple ports are what make them unique to Apple. I understand the headache and having to go out and purchase different adapters. Well, let me do this. Let me get my computer so you can I can show you. I don't want to assume that everybody knows what a port is. So I have my MacBook. This is a MacBook M1. If you look at it, it has two ports here. One is for the power cord and the other is um, the USB. Some examples of some common ports are the USB drive, the ethernet cable, hookup, Thunderbolt, as well as your power cord. This question today is actually a common complaint of Apple owners, those who own Mac computers or iMac computers. Apple is getting rid of their ports. Everyone is starting to complain about how Apple is phasing out their ports. The ports are becoming less and less. Apple used to provide you or your computer with three or four different USB ports. Now it's like down to two or one. That's why I don't like switching Apple computers for every two to three years. I try not to do this. That way I know for certain my adapters work with the computer that I'm using. If you're purchasing computers, Apple computers every year, you're gonna be in a spinning vicious cycle of having to buy adapters. As soon as you get the computer home, you're gonna need something to have to uh, purchase as far as adapter goes. Here's a question about accessory. So James says, why did Apple change their mouse from battery operated to USB charger? I can't even work on my computer anymore because my mouse is flipped over. Yes, James, I understand. And I actually started with the, the mouse that is, is battery operated. What you'll find out is actually lasts twice as long as the battery mouse. For those of you who don't know what I'm referring to, if you actually hook up your USB cord to your mouse, and you let this thing charge, you can let it charge for two hours. Your battery is gonna last, the battery in this mouse is gonna last at least a month. Apple is definitely about being more efficient with their products and accessories. When I first switched over from the battery to the USB, I didn't like it as well. I was used to the batteries for whatever reason. But now that I have the USB powered mouse, I don't even have to think about charging it up. It'll give me the low battery signal. Your Apple computer will warn you when your battery is low so you can charge it. I would personally charge it overnight. Just sit it and forget it. The next morning, you'll be good to go. These are all really good questions. We're going to the next question from Daniel. 
Daniel asks, what software do you use to edit your videos? So I mainly use Final Cut. I also use iMovie, which is the standard, all Macs have it. What I'll do is while I'm editing my videos, I'll use each program. Each program has its strengths and weaknesses. So some editing I'll use with Adobe Premiere, some other editing I'll use in Final Cut. It just depends on you know, how I'm feeling, my creativity. Yes, I still use iMovie, believe it or not, in 2021. The program gets the job done. I, of course, have Final Cut and Adobe Premiere to kind of bounce off some ideas or give me some more options as far as my editing of my video. Good question, Daniel. Thanks. Okay, here's my next question. Julia says, what's the point of paying for more hard drive space when I can just get an external hard drive for 30 bucks? So Julius, when it comes to hard drive space, you wanna make sure that you have enough space in within your Mac to be able to run your all of your software apps and your different programs efficiently. You can have 500 gigs of hard drive space, but if 400 gigs or 450 gigs of that hard drive space is already used up, your Mac's gonna tell you and it's gonna begin to lag and be slow. That being said, if you can get away with not having a large internal hard drive and just buying you, you know, that external hard drive, you know, do it. I prefer the external hard drive to be solid state. So when you're interchanging programs or moving throughout the software or trying to upload or download programs or save different files, get your SSD, which is the solid state drive. So just as an extra option, I've known some of my friends to use the, the external hard drive to even boot up their applications programs. I don't do that personally. I prefer to have my apps installed on the internal hard drive and have enough hard drive space to be able to run them efficiently and more smoothly. Hmm, okay, where can we go here? Oh, this is a good one. Martin, Martin says, I heard there's a chip called the M1X that was just released two weeks ago. What are your thoughts? Martin, I'm a late party guy. I'm late to the party when it comes to all the latest and greatest. I like to kind of sit back and just kind of survey how things play out with Apple's releases. I'm not exactly chasing what Apple is releasing every year or every month. That's just my personal opinion. I will say this, the M1 is not personally for me. It's not upgradable. You can't upgrade the RAM. You can't upgrade the operating system. You can't upgrade any hardware. So what's the point for me? And and I suppose if the M1X, I hadn't researched it, I still prefer the Intel Apple computers over the silicone Apple computers. Because Intel, you can still upgrade your RAM. I believe you can get like a 27 inch computer iMac and then still be able to upgrade your, your hardware. We'll talk about this later, but my overall opinion is until they allow the M1 chip for you to be able to upgrade your RAM past the 16 gigs, I believe it's, you can either get eight or 16 gigs until they allow for you to upgrade to 32. I'm not necessarily going to go out and purchase the M1. Let me correct that statement. I do have an M1 MacBook Air. I did purchase an M1 MacBook Air, but I do not use that for all of the, the editing programs. I, I use my older iMacs for editing my videos as well as my music that I edit. What I was going to share with you later is what Apple did to kind of cut corners with the M1 chip. In my opinion, in order to be competitive with their prices, they only allow that 16 gigs instead of allowing you to upgrade to 32. So here's the question that these questions kind of go hand in hand. The question is, why is the MacBook Air limited to only 16 gigs of RAM? Why not 24 or 32? My answer yet again is Apple's cutting corners. They wanted to be competitive in the market to be able to push out those M1 chips. This is my opinion once again. I do not like, hate is such a strong word, I do not like the M1 chips because they're not upgradable. You can't upgrade the RAM. You can't upgrade the computer. You wanna know the difference between the M1 chip versus the Intel? It's the price. You know, your Intel, Computers, if you want a strong Intel computer, you're, you're running every, anywhere between $2,300 to $2,400. You see the price difference. Intel is here. M1 chip is a little bit more competitive in price. This question. Here's another question. Why are there so many operating systems? Catalina, Big Sur, Mojave, Sierra, the list goes on and on. I remember back when Apple started releasing their different operating systems, you would have something to look forward to. There were new features, there, there were new items, there were new things you could do that were kind of cool that you couldn't do with the older operating system. Now, that's not so much the case. 
you don't really get that many features. So I tend to stick with the best operating system that fits me. I myself, I'm not necessarily gonna upgrade. It's not gonna benefit me to upgrade. Actually gonna cause more headache for me with this, the software and the programs that I use to try to upgrade. I said previously in a video that I did a couple weeks back, I try to stay within two to three um, operating systems behind what is current. Because what you, you don't really realize is they're really in beta testing with all of your third party software and all of your third party apps. These third party apps haven't caught up to Apple's latest operating system, which is now Monterey. So my answer is Apple spends hundreds of millions of dollars on their security features. So they're constantly updating their operating system. And that's the reason why they have to update. My advice on this is once again, once you get in the operating system, just stay there. You don't necessarily have to upgrade to the latest and greatest operating system. The operating system I'm using now is Catalina. It's like two or three operating systems behind Apple's current operating system. Just wait two to six months to see and make sure all of the tests have been cleared. A lot of these tests, they're in beta testing with the operating systems and third party programs. Wait, wait until those tests are clear. Wait until all the bugs are fixed and then you can upgrade to the latest operating system. The key to all of this is you have to ride the wave of trying to be too anxious to just jump. Just because you've heard from so many people are saying, oh, I'm upgrading to Big Sur. I'm upgrading to Monterey. And then they come back or sometimes they don't come back and tell you the consequences of them jumping, upgrading their systems ahead of when they absolutely need to. You can still update your security systems without having to upgrade the entire operating system. So you should be getting updates or a, a alert from Apple to update your security system. This is overkill. Let me just say to you, I have not upgraded my operating system on both of my computers. They both have Catalina. Yes, it's true. I haven't upgraded those operating systems in about a year. Jessica asked, Apple is being sued for defective M1 MacBooks. There's a video that she referenced. I did watch that video. It's a video by Created Tech. So I wanted to cite my source. So the lawsuit was regarding the MacBook M1, how their screens are defective. People were having issues with their screen cracking. People weren't really dropping their screens or knocking them over. The screens were cracking on their own. So before I get into this, this is totally unbiased. I'm only reporting to you what I researched in the news about Apple's lawsuit. I do have a MacBook M1, but I promise you, I, I'm gonna be unbiased. So basically the guy on the video, what he said, he went through all of the information, the court cases against Apple. What he found out about the screens is the construction of the M1 screen is no different from the older models. Apple didn't really deviate from its older models. Both screens are the same. The M1 screen is the exact same screen as the older model. In summary, this guy said there's about a 0.08% chance that you'll receive a Mac that's gonna be defective. Like I said, my Mac works just fine. It, it's, it's good. I bought this last year back in November, 2020. You shouldn't have anything to worry about. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to review this M1, this MacBook M1. Just let me know if you'd like to, for me to review this. I have part two of the questions coming up. I didn't get to every question in this video, but stay tuned for part two. Some of you who didn't get your questions answered on this video, I'm coming back with a part two. So stay tuned for that.